so good morning viewers in the last lecture on rent we had discussed as to how ricardo gave shape to the theory of rent according to ricardo land only can get rent and land gets rent because land has got the original and indestructible powers and with the help of these powers it gives food grains to mankind and it is short in supply it's limited in supply that is how rent is created for the ownership of the land <clears throat> so in this theory we noticed that rent was considered to be a differential surplus differential surplus in the sense that lands are of different grades different types and whatever is the difference between the marginal lands and the intra marginal lands is considered to be rent now we would like to critically evaluate the ricardian theory in ricardian theory what is the basis lands fertility has been considered to be original and indestructible and the truth is that this statement is not fully correct because lands fertility goes on declining this is one second it is not indestructible with floods or with other natural calamities the fertility of the land gets diminished or even finished in certain cases so strictly saying that land's fertility is original and indestructible may not be fully correct it gives us a trend it tells us something ab about a direction but in its finality the statement cannot be said to be correct similarly the sequence of cultivation as suggested by ricardo may not always hold good like ricardo says that initially the first grade lands are cultivated and later the those lands are cultivated which are not the first grade lands rather the second grade land is cultivated even later the third grade land is cultivated this order may hold good to a certain extent but it may not always hold good usually people prefer to cultivate those lands first which are situationally close to the market which are convenient to them this is the most easy approach of the people so the sequence of cultivation may not hold good in its entirety once again but it also tells us something about the uh, choice of human beings like they cultivate those lands first which are really good in terms of production and later on they switch over to the other lands and those other lands uh, may give lesser production but these are finally selected similarly this concept of marsh uh, ricardo is based on the perfect competition and perfect competition uh, is not a real realistic market condition we know about it similarly it tells us about the long run situation not the short run situation whereas in the short run also uh, the issue of rent may arise say for example in the short run even the supply of other factors the factors which are man made factors in the short run their supply may also get limited and the moment it gets limited it elements uh, it assumes the characteristics of land what is the fundamental characteristic of land that is it is fixed in supply so short in short term even the man made factors get short of supply and the fact that they get short of supply these man made factors may also fetch rent they also assume the land characteristic similarly ricardo takes into account only one use of land that is cultivation he does not talk about the other uses of land there may be many other uses of land uh, and if you consider only one use of land 
then you ignore the transfer earnings because the issue of transfer earnings is very important if the land can be utilized say for mining land can be utilized say for building a uh, factory then it, it has got some transfer earning because it its use can be transferred from one use to another that is known as the transfer earnings and if you say that land can be put to one use only then obviously uh, you ignore the transfer earnings similarly whatever payment is given to land becomes the economic rent in fact there are many other uses of land leading to transfer earnings and thus total rent cannot be termed as economic rent entire amount which is being received as a result of this cultivation activity cannot be considered to be rent similarly ricardo says that the supply of land is fixed for the entire country or maybe uh, in a limited manner entire society but the truth is for the individual cultivator the supply of land is always greater than zero under ricardo's concept it is zero zero means whatever is the supply it cannot be increased but for an individual cultivator it can be increased uh, not very easily but then yes it can be increased so we say there is always greater than zero in ricardo's concept marginal rent uh, land is considered to be no rent land on the other hand one uh, hardly finds a land which does not get rent every land is entitled to some rent or the other so saying that there is a marginal rent uh, land and that only that marginal land gets rent uh, does not get rent and others get rent this may not be strictly correct because every land fetches rent next in ricardo's theory ricardo's theory it is believed that rent does not affect prices this is also not fully correct the truth is for an individual cultivator rent paid is a part of the cost and the fact that rent paid is a part of the cost it affects the prices then this concept tells us that a superior or better land fetches more rent as compared to inferior land lands we call it differential surplus because of this reason only superior lands give more yield and inferior lands give lesser yield so it tells us about this mechanism but it does not tell us as to why does rent arise what is the reason of existence of rent this is not explained by the ricardo's theory now these criticisms of ricardian theory lead us to a better understanding of the concept of rent rent as explained by ricardo is very very important it shows us the way it is the first important theory regarding the study of rent so it has its own importance importance and now we can conclude about ricardian theory that it is the first systematic study of rent it establishes the basic understanding of the theory of rent before ricardo there was no such proper understanding about the rent now it is for the first time that we have this theory with us then ricardo considered that only the rent, land is uh, that, that that land is limited in supply but the truth is that even other factors get limited in supply at least in the short run so they attain the land characteristic or the land element modern economists concluded that each factor can get this can get this land element hence it can get rent as a token to honor ricardo later economists named the scarcity factor this is scarcity of land as the land element and this land element phrase is used in the study of rent profusely so this concept is important but it may not hold good in its entirety yes it is correct in the sense that it gives us some basic understanding so this is all about the ricardian theory of rent then there are some other aspects related to the study of rent the first and the most important is quasi rent this concept of quasi rent quasi means 
फिफ्टी परसेंट और हाफ हाफ रेंट एंड हाफ समथिंग एल्स सो मार्शल हैज क्वाइंट दिस टर्म क्वासी रेंट सो दिस क्वासी रेंट इज अ कॉन्सेप्ट इंट्रोड्यूस बाय मार्शल दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज बेस्ड ऑन द अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट इन द शॉर्ट रन द सप्लाई ऑफ मैन मेड फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन ऑल्सो गेट्स रेस्ट्रिक्टेड सो वट एवर दे गेट शुड इट बी टर्म्ड रेंट बट मार्शल हेजिटेट्स इन कॉलिंग इट रेंट डायरेक्टली बिकॉज वाट ही सेज दैट this price of factors is dependent on their demand so when the price fluctuation takes the prices upwards then uh, there may be more returns to a, to that factor and when because of fluctuations price falls down then there may be less rent or they may even go below the usual earnings so the issue is should we call it rent this was the quandary in the minds of in the mind of marshall and therefore he did not call it rent rather he preferred to call it quasi rent so marshall believes that short term earnings because of inelastic supply as i said in the short run even the other factors can be of inelastic supply character so in the short short run earnings cannot be called rent because unlike rent it is subject to fluctuations depending upon the change in the price of the product in the short run if the demand of the product increases the price will go up but supply of capital equipments cannot be increased in the short run now price stays high and total revenues also increase on the other in the short run if the demand of the product decreases the price will decrease its price will go down and total revenue will also decrease so the short term earnings of man made factors sometimes exceeds their normal rentals and sometimes it goes below the normal rentals unlike rent these rentals are not fixed and keep fluctuating because with rent the amount is fixed but in this case the amount is not fixed since the rentals of man made factors keep fluctuating in the short run marshall did not prefer to call these rentals as rent and coined a new term quasi rent this is what quasi rent is thus quasi rent is what quasi rent is equal to total revenue minus total variable cost whatever is the total revenue you deduct variable cost out of that and the balance is quasi rent so this concept is just an extension of ricardo's theory with regard to the factors other than land other than land because land as per marshall as per ricardo fetches rent other factors do not but marshall says even the other man made factors can get short of supply in the short run and if that happens then they can whatever they get they they should it should also be called rent but since it is subject to fluctuations it cannot be called rent rent rather it should be called quasi rent but this quasi rent does not exist in the long run now we come to the most important theory that is the modern theory of rent till now we have seen as ricardo said that only land can get the rent marshall says even the other factors can get rent in the short run but modern of the modern theory of rent says that not only land but even other factors can get rent the issue is land is short of supply so are the other factors if the other factors are short of supply then they can also get rent not that they cannot get rent modern economists believe that the other factors of production to get uh to get short of supply at times and claim rent they said that theory of rent is a general theory and not limited to land only the factors of production may be perfectly elastic when we say perfectly elastic then these can be used for one purpose only or may be perfectly non specific perfectly specific or perfectly 
non specific these are the two types of factors say one factor can be used for a particular use only this is perfectly specific the other category may be perfectly non specific now these can be used for many purposes for any purpose whatever so this specificity is a character which can be assumed by any factor for example it may be specific at a particular time but at the other time it may be a non specific factor say for example if wheat has been sown on a plot of land it becomes specific but the moment that wheat is cut and the plot of land is free it is ready for any other sowing so it becomes non specific so no factor of production remains specific or non specific always sometimes it is specific and sometimes it is non specific so any factor uh, this is only a partly part phenomena that is sometimes it is specific and sometimes non specific similarly we say that any factor is partly specific and partly non specific modern economists say that rent is payment for specificity now it can be concluded here that rent is attributable not to land but to land element which is referred by specificity i said a little earlier that this land element is important so if this land element is acquired by the other factors of production they can also get rent so any factor can rent, get rent now another view point has been given by Uh, mrs joan robinson the famous economist she says that uh, transfer earnings or opportunity cost should also be taken into consideration and opportunity cost is a factor for evaluating the amount of rent now for example a fact a particular factor of production has got the opportunity of getting some amount in other use also it is being put in one use say for example if in one use it's getting rupees 100 and it expects to get rupees 100 in another use also then it does not have any opportunity cost but suppose and no transfer earnings you can call it transfer earnings you can call it opportunity cost but if this factor can get rupees 60 in any other use then transfer earnings will be 100 Minus sixty is equal to forty. Now this forty will be rent attributable to that factor. Now once again, let us try to understand it very clearly. If a factor is getting hundred in a particular use, and you remove that factor from this particular use, then it can at least fetch rupees sixty in other use. So the difference over and above the opportunity cost. which is being received by this factor that is 100 minus 60 is equal to 40 this is the amount of rent so in other words what is rent rent is total revenue received by a factor minus its opportunity cost or transfer earnings so rent is a surplus over and above the minimum supply price of a factor this is the minimum supply price because this factor can get rupees 60 in the other use naturally therefore it would not like to work in this use for less than 60 because if you remove this factor from here give this factor less than 60 then the factor will go back to its its second use in which it can fetch at least rupees 60 so rent is what payment for specificity as per the modern theory payment over and above the minimum supply price or opportunity cost is rent now it can be understood from two angles one is rent is a payment for specificity and second one rent is a payment over and above the minimum supply price or the opportunity cost of that factor i mean technically both are the same there is no difference in the two because the specificity also refers to opportunity cost so rent is equal to actual reward to a factor minus its opportunity cost or transfer price or minimum supply price or specificity price 
now if graphically we wish to present the uh, modern theory of rent in modern theory of rent we can draw this situation show this situation graphically with the help of supply line having different shapes initially we take the supply line s s which is perfectly elastic perfectly elastic means without any variation in price any quantity of this factor can be available now the demand curve for the factor has got the negative slope as usual it intersects the supply line at a particular point p so when you draw a perpendicular line from p to x axis it touches at point q and on the y axis with the help of supply line ss it already touches at point s this shows the price that means oq units of labor are available at os price and the total reward received by factor for this quantity is oqps now since the factor is perfectly elastic meaning thereby the factor is totally non specific and because it is non specific it will not fetch any rent this is first situation depicted by this graph wherein we get to know that if a factor is totally non specific entire payment may not be called rent it will not be called rent now let us take the another extreme in this extreme the supply line is perfectly inelastic perfectly inelastic line is drawn almost at 90 degree angle that is a vertical line vertical uh, parallel to y axis so we have drawn this line s s parallel to y axis as a vertical line the demand curve is as it is here you notice that as you increase the payment uh, the same quantity the same quantity of labor is available whatever payment you make for it because it is perfectly specific the fact is that this factor of production is perfectly specific therefore whatever is the quantity available it's known to us this quantity is oq and whatever price is determined by the market conditions in this case the demand curve fixes the price so the price is fixed at or or op uh, no sp this sp or o o r price has been fixed up by the demand curve so the entire area represented by the rectangle o s p r is the rent entire amount is rent we notice that in the earlier graph no amount was rent this is the other extreme when the supply curve was horizontal there was no rent when supply curve has become vertical there is total rent now let us take a situation in between these two now this supply curve denotes that situation the situation of less than perfectly elastic in this case the factor is partly specific and partly non specific supply line you must be noticing touches y axis at point s so till this point s supply line is non specific and be, uh, beyond this uh, is specific and beyond this it is non specific so when it becomes non specific then it can be put to any use and when it is specific it can be put to one use only as a result you find that there is uh, rent as well as the other income so this is supply line o it touches y axis at os 
this is the element of specificity and then uh, beyond that with the help of demand curve dd we find another line touching y axis at w so this w s area is is specific so this is specific so this can be called rent now supply curve denotes the situation of less than perfectly elastic in this case the factor is partly specific and partly non specific total reward is denoted by the rectangle o w p q and rent is w s p because this is amount this is specificity of a factor and the area shown below that is actually the result of non specificity this is o s p q now this is up uh, this is the opportunity cost this is non specificity that is this much of amount can be fetched by this factor uh, at any time but this extra amount which is earned by this factor is known as rent so this is graphic representation of modern theory of rent in three diagrams in the first diagram we notice that the supply line is a horizontal line whereas in the second line we notice that supply line is a vertical line and in a vertical line entire amount is rent in a horizontal line there is no rent and in a line which touches the y axis at a certain point we notice that the factor is partly specific and partly non specific whatever reward is received for non specificity this reward is not rent but whatever is received for specificity that is wsp in the third diagram it is rent now we may conclude it ricardo said that rent can be fetched only by land but modern economists believe that each factor can get rent which is the surplus over the opportunity cost ricardo believed that rent is a differential surplus because of difference in the fertility of land modern economists say that rent is paid for specificity or land element now please do remember this is the most important distinction what is that is specificity or opportunity cost rent is payable for specificity or opportunity cost but then ricardo says that rent is a differential surplus further ricardo said that rent face uh, rent uh, arises over and above the productive productivity of marginal land but modern economists hold that rent is found by deducting opportunity cost from the total income of a factor similarly ricardo held that rent does not affect prices but for a cultivator it is a part of the cost and therefore it is uh, it is included with the cost you cannot ignore it while calculating the cost finally it can be said that ricardo's theory uh, prepares the ground for the study of rent and modern theory has rationally been built over it so this is what the modern theory is now to sum up the entire theory of rent ricardo gave a principle gave a theory known as theory of rent he attributed it to the limited supply of land and he said that rent is given to the landlords because land has got original and indestructible powers of giving the food grains to mankind this theory gives us some fundamental understanding but then it has got certain weaknesses based upon that the later economists developed the modern theory wherein they say that opportunity cost or the transfer earnings are rather more important which is a result of specificity for non specificity whatever is received that is the normal reward but whatever is received for specificity that is actually the rent so rent means total reward received by a factor uh, minus opportunity cost minimum supply cost or transfer earnings of a particular factor of production this is known as the rent
so modern economists say that any factor of production can get rent because this land element can be found in any factor of production thank you very much that's all for the day